Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Heithouse. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the challenges students can have in understanding inheritance and evolution. For middle school students, it can be hard to make the connection between processes that occur at small scales and the resulting changes at larger ones. This is especially true with inheritance, a process involving an organism and the traits it inherits from its parents, and then the broader patterns of evolution of a population as a whole. Let's take a look at some of the ways you can help your students avoid the pitfalls and preconceptions that might otherwise trip them up. One common preconception is that all traits are inherited and controlled by genes. If this preconception isn't confronted, students may mistakenly think that acquired traits can cause evolution in a population. One way to confront the misconception is to have students contrast traits that are acquired versus those that are inherited. Here's an example. Let's say we have a crocodile. And crocodiles have really nice big teeth. If one crocodile were to lose its teeth, well, it wouldn't have babies that were toothless crocs. The loss of teeth was an acquired trait. But having big, sharp teeth, that's an inherited trait. Think of all the different examples that students could come up with on their own. Engage the class in a discussion of these. Have them sort inherited and acquired traits. And this preconception will be done with. Once students understand that genes are the basis of inherited traits, they may think that all organisms within a population have the same genotype because they look roughly similar. Actually, genetic variation, or differences in genes, is the basis for all of the distinct species of organisms on Earth. Genetic variation is also responsible for the differences in inherited traits that may be observed in a single population or species. You can help students with this by having them look at variation within the students in their classroom. You know, look at things like hair color, eye color, maybe even height. Then try to link this to other organisms like dogs that they're familiar with. They'll see that there's lots of genetic variation out there. So once students understand inheritance, they can have problems understanding how these processes that involve how traits are passed from parents to offspring result in changes in populations or traits within populations over time. The easiest way to get students to understand this process is to yeah, give them examples. One might be to imagine that you have a bird that eats seeds. And you know, let's say there are little tiny seeds like this that are easy to chew, but they're very hard to pick up. Other seeds are pretty easy to pick up, but if you don't have a big, tough beak, you're never going to get to what you want to eat inside. And if we have a population of birds, then both these types of seeds are available in the environment. There's probably going to be a fair bit of genetic variation. But if you were to have a change in the environment so that uh, those little seeds disappeared, any birds that uh, have a trait of a small beak for picking up the seeds probably aren't going to survive, and they're not going to reproduce. So over time, the genes in the population that uh, cause the big crushing beak are going to get more and more common. And eventually, you're going to have a population of birds that looks different than the original one. Genetic differences between populations of a species can really add up over time. So as these populations change, you can actually end up with new species. So if you think about our birds, if they're spread across many different islands, and some of those islands have just small seeds, and others just have big seeds, over time, each generation of birds on each island is going to be a little bit better at eating big seeds only, or only eating little seeds. We've actually seen this happen on the Galapagos Islands. One species of finch came to those islands, and the different islands have different environmental conditions. So through time, they actually became different species. A final misconception that I'd like to talk about is that evolution has purpose or intent. You know, some students may think that species evolve purposefully, you know, maybe to satisfy a new need in the environment. You need to remind students that genetic variation can't be made by natural selection. You know, natural selection only acts on variation that's already in the population. So in some cases, the environment may change, and there are actually no individuals with traits that allow them to survive and this would ultimately lead to extinction. 
So you really need to reinforce the idea that evolution through natural selection, you know, at any scale, can only act on existing traits that have a genetic basis. Thank you.